Okay, so let's go through uh, the mechanics of uh, yield protocol. It is intriguing uh, that there's a possibility of having a fixed rate borrow uh, within, uh, within this particular uh, protocol. So we'll use this Y token, and the Y token, as I said, will effectively allow for a fixed rate uh, borrow and lending. And, um, and it's going to act like a zero coupon bond. The example I gave you uh, where we buy a bond at 90, hold it for a year, we get 100, uh, and that rate of return is fixed at 11.1%. The, the same idea is going to happen here. So you've got a Y token with a target asset of, let's say, one die, so $1. Um, and that's backed by collateral, which is uh, Ether. And the maturity date is one year. And the Y token is trading at, um, let's say, 0.92 die, so 92 cents. So, uh, this we're going to use, and we'll go through the mechanics, so you'll see what actually happens. That uh, at the end of the year, uh, the 0.92 goes to 1. So think of the 0.92 as the zero coupon bond. So effectively, what we're locking in is 8.7%. Uh, and again, that's calculated um, you know, in, in terms of uh, the, the gain, the 8 uh, cents divided by the 92 cents, and that is 8.7%. Uh, percent. So there's something else that's kind of interesting that we'll talk about uh, a little later. And that is if you buy this looking for the 8.7% uh, percent, uh, return, and something happens in terms of uh, under collateralization, actually you get paid your 8.7%, and that could happen before the full year uh, period. So it might be you're just holding for a month. If there is an event where the collateralization ratio is pierced, then everything is unwound, and you get the 8.7%. Uh, so very interesting uh, the way that this is actually uh, constructed. Okay, so let's go through uh, the mechanics. Okay, so um, I've got a diagram here, and uh, basically the buyer of the Y die um, is, is basically going to lock in uh, an 8.7% uh, return. So to start things off, we've got um, uh, Ether that equals 200 die, and there's a collateralization ratio of 125%. So the first step is that Ether is supplied as collateral. Um, the second step is that uh, I call the seller mints 100 Y die. Okay. The next thing is that the buyer is going to purchase that 100 Y die and pay 92 a die to the seller. Okay, so, so think about uh, what's happening here. Um, we're using this Y die, but effectively um, the, the seller here uh, is basically getting um, 92 uh, die. Okay, so uh, that's where we kind of start. And then uh, in one year, the buyer is going to deposit the 100 Y die, which they've got, and they will get 100 die. So the buyer, remember, at the beginning, pays out to the seller 92 die, and in the end, when they deposit uh, the 100 uh, Y die, they get back 100 die. So the rate of return in this particular example, 100, divided by the 92, subtract 1, 8.7%. Okay, so it's, in, in my opinion, ingenious idea uh, to actually introduce um, fixed rate um, uh, borrowing and lending uh, into, uh, into the DeFi uh, space. 
So let's continue uh, with the example uh, and, and look at uh, different uh, scenarios. So in the first scenario in my diagram, um, we've got a situation where the price of ether falls uh, below the maintenance point. So the maintenance point was 125. So the price of ether drops uh, b below that. So, so what happens in this particular case? So step number one, there's a keeper that comes in, sees that the position is under collateralized, and basically what they do is they sell 0.8 ether. And in selling the 0.8 ether, they effectively pay back the loan of 100 die. Okay, so, so what happens here is that as soon as that uh, event occurs, as soon as the keeper comes in, the buyer actually gets their 100 die. So remember, the, the buyer came in and, uh, and, and actually uh, paid uh, 92. On the closing, the buyer gets the 100. They were expecting to get the 100 after one year, but this could happen after one day. And they get the 8.7%. Uh, so this is a great deal for the buyer. Obviously, for the seller, uh, it isn't a great deal. And, and just, just to be 100% clear here, I'm using buyer just in the same way as if I was buying a zero coupon bond. Right? So I buy a zero coupon bond for 92 and hold it for a year, I get 100. So it's 8.7%. So think of this, the analogous situation, there's a liquidation event. The keeper comes in, liquidates, and then basically pays the buyer the 100 early. So you get this 8.7% return over a short period of time. And obviously, if you annualize that rate of return, it's, it's much greater than 8.7%. So this works really well. Of course, um, the, the borrower would get back uh, 0.2. So remember, only 0.8 of the ether was used uh, to pay back. Um, so the, the seller would get uh, 0.2 back, but there's also uh, a keeper reward. And that would eat into whatever refund uh, there was. So, so in the end, uh, the seller, what do they have? They've got the 92 die, and they got the 0.2 uh, ETH. So this is just like one example of how this works, um, and I call this uh, scenario uh, A. So what about scenario B? And that's, suppose nothing happens uh, to the price of Ether. So it remains constant at 200 uh, die. So, so basically, you've got the same sort of uh, steps. Um, the buyer, um, they deposit the 100 Y die, and then, um, th then essentially what happens is that they get their 100 die. Okay, so they've locked in their 8.7% rate of return. And the seller, well, um, they can basically withdraw the, um, the, the 0.5 that's, uh, that's left over. Um, and, and essentially what they've got is 92 die and uh, 0.5 uh, of an ETH. Okay, so, so again, this is the mechanics. Um, one is liquidation, one is no liquidation. And uh, of course, what happens to uh, the seller here greatly depends upon the price of Ether because they've actually pledged Ether as collateral. For the buyer, it's straightforward. The buyer is going to get 8.7%, and that's it. So it's an extremely uh, interesting uh, type of system here. So um, there, uh, there are some other aspects uh, to what actually happens here. And um, the important thing to realize is that from the point of view of the buyer, this is a way to lock in uh, a rate of return. So what else is going on with uh, yield protocol? Uh, one thing that's also interesting, and again, we haven't had this yet in DeFi, 
is this idea of potentially using the Y tokens to construct yield curves. So a yield curve is the yield depending upon the maturity. So in the world of centralized finance, you have a rate for, let's say, treasury bills, which might be 90 days, a one-year bond, a five-year, 10-year, 30-year bond. Each of those yields is different. Usually the yield curve is upward sloping. And that tells us something about expected inflation, about expected real activity, the state of the economy. Indeed, my, my dissertation at the University of Chicago showed that when the yield curve was reversed, where the long-term rates were actually lower than the short-term rates, that, that contains very important information about the onset of a recession. So yield curves are extremely useful, and this protocol actually allows us to construct yield curves also. I just went through a detailed example looking at a one-year horizon for locking in an 8.7% return. Well, it doesn't have to be one year. It could be one month. It might be five years. So in doing this, when we take a look at the actual price here, we can figure out what the yields look like for different maturities. And that gives us insight into uh, what the market participants are actually thinking uh, about the future. So think of it as a measure of sentiment. Uh, so very valuable, uh, undeveloped yet. So, so this is very early on, but it gives us something equivalent to what we've got in centralized finance, which could be useful but uh, a much more efficient uh, implementation of this. So there's other things that uh, you can do with yield protocol. Um, one thing that's kind of obvious is that you could, um, you could speculate on interest rates with this uh, protocol. Um, we've got lots of uh, protocols we've talked about that have variable interest rates. So um, you might have a view on these interest rates. And um, for example, you can imagine being like a seller of YDI and then using uh, some of the DAI derivative assets as collateral. And when you do that, um, essentially the seller is paying a fixed rate on the YDI, uh, but you're receiving a variable rate on the collateral. So this is a bet that rates will increase. So again, many of you who operate in the world of centralized finance will recognize uh, this sort of trade. And again, given that the, this area of decentralized finance is so early, we're gonna see more and more of these ideas that are popular in centralized finance replicated in decentralized finance and basically uh, you know, completing all of the missing um, components. So, so again, this is a very straightforward way um, to, to pay fixed and receive floating could be the reverse, right? So uh, you could receive fixed and, and, uh, and pay floating. That's a possibility too and very easy uh, to implement uh, with this uh, protocol. So, uh, again, yield is, uh, is a very good idea. Um, it supplies something that we haven't had in DeFi. <laughs> DeFi is a young space. So I can't say we haven't had for decades because the space is like four years old. But it gives you an idea of how rapidly the space actually, uh, actually evolves. And just like other DeFi protocols, We've got the DeFi Legos. So, so Yield easily integrates with the other uh, DeFi uh, protocols. It's ERC-20. So uh, it means that you can use Yield uh, along with these other uh, protocols. So, so again, I think that uh, some investors are uncomfortable with variable rate uh, loans. 
Now we've got the possibility of uh, fixed rate. So let's go through our list that we usually uh, go through uh, for these protocols. Um, we've got uh, the traditional finance problems of centralized control. This is decentralized and, uh, and, and there's nobody really controlling uh, this uh, protocol other than um, the governance. Uh, limited access, uh, we've talked about in centralized finance. Well, yield solution is that any market participant can, can actually uh, do um, the, the buying or selling to lock in a rate. Our example of 8.7% is, uh, is um, one example of a rate that you could lock in. Um, inefficiency, and this is like important. We've talked about this, that the, when you go apply for a loan at a bank, the rate that you're paying is higher than it would be uh, because the bank has got all this infrastructure that they need to pay for, the brick and mortar, the, the, the bureaucracy, um, all of the security issues, all that needs to be paid for. And yield is, is algorithmic. Um, it is very lean, running on Ethereum, and can be more um, competitive than centralized finance. Lack of interoperability, well known in terms of uh, fixed income instruments in traditional finance, is extremely difficult to, to think about buying a five-year bond and selling a one-year bond. The, uh, to, to swap those two is going to be costly, whereas yield protocol, this is very straightforward, interoperable um, with any Ethereum target uh, asset. And the last thing, opacity, uh, it, it is really... Um, something that is very typical in decentralized finance. This is completely open. So you can see everything and it's easy. And we will go through examples a little later um, where I will pull up Etherscan and you can see the, uh, the actions step by step. And of course, that is not possible in traditional centralized finance.